Thanks so much. Um, you know, as Fernando said, I'm Andrew Odawan. I'm the CTO of O'Reilly Media. And uh, we're really thrilled to be participating in, uh, and hosting JupyterCon with the NumFocus Foundation and the Pi Project Jupiter. And you know, I want to situate our participation here in kind of the history of the company. Um, we've had a long, uh, a long track record of spotting innovations early. Uh, O'Reilly you know, put the first commercial website on the internet. Uh, we created the term Web 2.0, came out of uh, an O'Reilly event. We launched the maker movement with uh, the publication of uh, Make Magazine. And even the term open source uh, came from an original uh, an O'Reilly event. So we've really helped identify, popularize, and catalyze a lot of the kinds of technology movements. And I think one of the things that's really on our radar is Jupiter as kind of one of the next big things that's, that's coming up. And you know, I think it's probably, as you've listened to speakers like uh, Dimbaba yesterday and Lorena just now and, and Jeremy um, uh, earlier this morning and, and everybody in the sessions, it's really, Jupiter is a tool that's fundamental to the mission of our company, which is helping to spread the knowledge of innovators, getting the information out of people who know things and getting it to a wide audience in a diverse way. And Jupiter's ability to weave complex computational narratives that include text and code and images and interactive kinds of elements are really allow that amazing transmission. And that's why we're so fascinated by it. So we're really looking to use this to help us create kind of the next generation of technical media. And what I want to talk about a little bit first is just kind of our approach, how we're thinking about the, how this process would actually work. And then, you know, wouldn't be doing my job as a conference chair if I didn't say, you know, we want to work with you uh, to help create this, both as creators of the, the tools, creators of the media, and also as people who are consuming it and using it. So first, um, our approach. Uh, it's basically a fairly simple three-part model. Uh, it starts with your content, to which we add a Docker file, and then we have a runtime for your, your container, so how you're actually going to be able to run the, the notebook itself. Uh, for content, uh, everything, I think, um, in our tool chain typically begins with Git. So we begin with a repository that has your notebooks, uh, your data, your assets, basically everything you need for whatever your kind of media you're creating uh, needs to begin its life in a Git repository. Uh, this is a screenshot of our internal um, GitLab uh, repository. We've got a, um, a server. We've got about 6,000 different Git projects that we use to create pretty much all of our, all of our books and materials. Uh, and not all of them use Jupyter, but you know, it's, it's a big commitment to Git, so we've been using it a long time. It's a, it's a very successful tool. Uh, this, the second part of the model is we add a Docker file to one of these repositories. And uh, if you're not familiar with Docker, it's very quickly, it's a way to specify a computing environment so that you can say, here's all the dependencies that a computer you're, you need for a process to run, and then you can ship, package it up into a container that can be shipped anywhere. Uh, we use uh, the Docker Stacks project, which is another uh, great project supported by the Jupyter community, which provides a number of Docker files that give you a variety of computing scenarios. So if you're doing scientific computing, you can just say, I want to use the Docker file for scientific computing, and it comes with you know, a million different pieces of software. Similarly, there's one for, for data science, for Scala, for R, for uh, TensorFlow, so really a host of different kinds of things, and it, it really helps you get jump started quickly. Then um, the last part of the model is a runtime. Like, how do you actually, once you've got a notebook and you've got a, you know, a specification of what your uh, components are that it needs, how do you actually run that notebook? And to think about this, um, you know, I'm an MBA, so I have to have everything in a two by two matrix. Um, we've thought about uh, breaking that up into this sort of grid. Like if you're running it on your own computer, your, your runtime, maybe it's just Conda. You know, we heard Peter Wang talk about how, what an important uh, tool that is. So you, you might use Conda. You might use Docker or a, a virtual box on your own machine. So you're, you're running it inside a virtu virtualized on your own computer. Or you might use JupyterHub if you're deploying it to the cloud somewhere. Or Binder, you heard Jeremy, I think it's great news that, uh, that Jupyter, the Jupyter project is gonna be supporting uh, Binder. Or you might just simply run it purely on the cloud, on uh, something like uh, Azure or uh, Google, uh, Google Clouds. But however you do it, you need to be able to give users a, 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 real, a, a running instance of the notebook. And that's a kind of a big problem that we're working on helping to solve. So you know, that's kind of how we think about it. You know, that's our approach. You know, but what's, kind of what's in it for you if you, if you work with us? You know, what are the options that you have as people who are, who are creating this stuff? Um, the first is obviously books. You know, we've been a long time, uh, 
re long being relative in the life of software, um, a supporter of uh, using notebooks for creating uh, books and just traditional kinds of media. Probably the most popular has been um, the Python Data Science Handbook, which I've seen, uh, which is by Jake Vanderplas. It's a, it's a wonderful reference. But what's, what's really cool about it is because we've got such a commitment to Git and we've used it, we've also been able to, to cross-license it so that you can put it up on GitHub. And it's been uh, perennially one of the top trending uh, Jupyter projects on, um, on uh, GitHub. And I just kind of randomly picked this day. I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't do anything else. But you know, it's the number one uh, trending repo just on the rando day that I picked, uh, picked to do this screenshot. The second way that you could work with us, oh, well, I should, I, let me just go back for a second. You know, I know a lot of people are concerned about their content being locked away inside some kind of proprietary system or some kind of proprietary publisher. I think this is one of the things that really helps insulate against that. We have a great history of, of uh, light, flexible licensing models, so we're trying to address that and make, really support um, the open nature of content. Um, the second way uh, that we've got for uh, exploring and using Jupyter technology is a format we call Orioles, and those are basically ways that your content starts its life as a notebook, but then we take it and we marry it to a video of you in the studio, and you're able to talk through the notebook and provide additional context so that you can kind of give color commentary as you're going. A lot of people like to have multiple modalities of learning, and uh, Oriole is a technology for doing that. But what I'm really excited to announce, um, a, a, a new program and a new way to work with us is through our uh, online training program in the Safari platform. So we launched earlier this year an ability to have instructor-led training in uh, Safari, and it's been a huge success. And basically, you're able to go to one of these courses, interact directly with the instructor, because it's, you have a person there on the other end that you can ask questions of and that you can get more, uh, more feedback than you would normally get through just a webcast or something that's static. And it's been a hugely successful program. And you know, what we're doing is pairing that, that great program with a Jupyter Hub. So if you want to teach a course, if you want to teach a class, um, we'll take your Git repository of your notebooks, we'll help you work to build a Docker file for it if you, if you don't have one already, and we'll spin up a Jupyter Hub instance, and then you'll be able to give that to people as you're doing your class and your training. So it's just a great way to give a great experience uh, for the course. And you know, um, I think, uh, I can't remember who mentioned the work that Chris Holdsgraf and all the other, uh, Carol Willing and Min and all, you know, all these other people in the project have been doing a great job making this uh, process of setting the Jupyter Hub instances up really easily, and we're, we're leveraging that. So what it looks like is basically when you're the instructor, you'll get a, a link right before your class that you can send to your students. So you post it in Slack, they click on the link, and then immediately they're into the content and they're into having a great experience. You know, and the problem that this kind of solves is, you know, I, I don't know how many of you have been to trainings where the first 20 or 30 minutes looks about like this um, because you've got the wrong version of PIP, you've got the wrong version of Python, maybe you've got the wrong version of uh, some other software, or maybe you don't have enough Wi-Fi. You know, there's just a whole host of things that go wrong. And what we're trying to do is reduce the friction so that you can just get immediately into learning and focus on uh, both you as the teacher, as a, you know, as the instructor, and also the students can have a great immediate experience and reduce the pain of trying to get all this stuff to, to work and to set up. And that's one of the great things that Jupyter can do for you. So uh, we're launching with six um, instructors. Paco is one of the people who, Paco Nathan is one of the people who volunteered. He, he described himself as a guinea pig, so I'm just going to describe himself, uh, describe him as a guinea pig too. These are our other guinea pigs. Um, and we're trying to really show the full breadth of things that you can do with the Jupyter uh, platform when we're, we're doing training, so we have everything from natural language processing to statistics to practice data cleaning in Python to TensorFlow uh, to Go. And we're using the Jupyter, uh, the Gopher Notes kernel to, to support uh, Go training. So we really want to have a wide variety of, of things. And um, let, so later today, if you're interested in checking this out, you're going to receive an email that's going to describe to you uh, how you can pre-enroll for, for Paco's first class. You'll be able to uh, reg activate your Safari account and then sign up. Uh, these things fill up quickly, so you'll, you'll be able to get kind of priority registration. 
And um, then, you know, we want to work and engage with you. So if you are interested in doing uh, one of these uh, projects with Jupiter, or really just working with us in any kind of way in creating this new future of media, go to proposals.oreilly.com slash OTR. And uh, we would love to engage with this community. We're looking forward to, uh, to doing this again and having a deep and rich relationship with the Jupiter community. Thank you very much.